Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In the previous video, we talked about this image distortion component and uh, we saw how to use the component. Now, in today's video, we're going to see how to apply that on a text. And this component can be useful for your portfolio project or you can use it anywhere. And behind this text, whatever you're seeing, this is another component which I'm working on, the image distortion in a different module, which is kind of liquid flow type distortion. But we're not going to talk about that today. Let's dive in to the project now and see how to use it. So this is as simple as the previous component that I showed you. You just need to put your text here. Then you can select your font. And this is a very big list of Google fonts. Approximately more than 1700 fonts are available. So you can choose any font type you want. And then you've got font size. You can control the size. The minimum value is 10 and the maximum value is 300. You can control the font color and also you can control the font weight. Now, there is these three properties which are related to the distortion. And as I explained these properties in my previous video, this works as the same. The first one is the fall off and the distortion actually depends on the fall off. The lower the value is, the distortion will be less. The higher the value, the distortion will be more. So let me show you. This is the this is a higher value. There's lots of distortion here. And if you lower the value, let's say 0.2, right? You see the distortion gets lesser. All right. Now, dissipation is how fast the distortion is going to fade out from your screen. So... The higher the value is, it's going to fade out quicker. The lower the value is, it's going to fade out slower. And deformation size explains like how big your distortion property will be. So if you make it bigger, you see, uh, let me just increase the fall off so that you can see it. So you'll see that deformation is happening a lot, right? So that's actually maintained by the deformation size and also connected with fall off. Now, this whole thing is made uh, using WebGL and uh, it is uh, perfectly usable in any project you want. So, yeah, this was it. Uh, one thing I need to mention here is when you copy this from the Remix file, it will get the component text distortion, but you'll not get this Google font. So, let me go to the code and show you. Here you will see a link, which is perfectly fine, which is going to refer to my project, which is um, probably Framer will use a link uh, over here. Um, but I will recommend that you, when you get the Rims file, you go to Google Fonts, copy this, copy all of this, and create a file, new file in your project so you need to create a new override and name that as google font or anything you want dot js whatever file name you're going to put you need to come back here and then refer the file in this way right but uh, you don't need to do that because uh, you just can simply use the component by copying it from the remix file and everything should work all right, this was it. I believe this will be really helpful. Another thing I forgot to mention. Currently, you can just put one line of text here. Um, Multi-line paragraph is not supported yet. I'm still working on that. But I believe this is useful yet. In the next video, in the next upcoming video, we are going to talk about this image training effect that we are going to create in Framer. And let me show you, let me give you a quick view. We will have all the properties 
to control the image trail animation. So yeah, this was it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. Make a comment if you have any question. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.